parent's worst nightmare is the loss of a son or daughter. Getting a phone call from the sheriff's department saying that they found your, uh, your daughter dead in her apartment, which is what happened to me. Five girls in a car. One daughter came to our hospital brain dead. One went to Western Medical Center Santa Ana. Mom had to try and figure out which child to be with. Mom had to let go that one child wasn't going to get better while another child that was in the car with them was in the room next door paralyzed. To get a phone call that your son has died, identifying his body, watching him being brought out in a potty bag, picking out his coffin, picking out a grave site. I think the worst thing that can happen to a parent is to lose a child. Um, and when you actually get the call, and the moment that you hear the words spoken, um, in my case it was a telephone call from a county agency. In my wife's case it was me t telling her verbally. Um, but no matter what, the reaction is the same. You're, uh, you are just uh, profoundly saddened and sort of thrown into a kind of a lifetime of of uh, sorrow and sadness and um, it's almost like somebody locking the jail cell and turning the lock and there's no coming back. The worst part was going over to, uh, going over to Tucson and then going in and claiming her, seeing her for the first time. That was uh, very difficult. Uh, fortunately, I was over there with, uh, with my wife and also a good friend of mine flew in from out of town. And at that point in time, on the way back on the airplane, um, he suggested that I might want to start a foundation in her name and try to have some sort of positive spin on her life. I started looking for organizations that I could support uh, financially, and I, uh, that's when I went to Jade for the first time. I always knew I wanted to work with people. I always knew I wanted to be a social worker, so that was always a dream and desire, and, um, you know, after I made some changes in my life and went into this field, I started working with law enforcement. It yeah. continued on to the sheriff's department, and um, I got pregnant with triplets and thought I was going to be a stay-at-home mom and not do this. And I, uh, you know, was strongly encouraged by some professionals, deputies out in the field to, can you please do the drug and alcohol program like you did before? And so that's what we did. Marty and Mike Darnold came and met with a board member and myself, and we were looking for something that needed to be proactive because our kids were um, not learning the lessons that we needed them to learn. They would, they, the recidivism was pretty high. Um, so we, we started a program called Second Chance, and uh, it was a three-day program to bring in speakers and uh, discussion topics for the kids. And uh, Jade was already in place. Jade was a, um, a evening program with the kids and the parents. And so we put together a program that if, if you were caught at a dance or a, a school function or at school under the influence, then you'd have to go through those programs and hopefully um, learn some lessons and, and maybe not do it again. I started speaking for um, at drug rehabs and then also at D.A.R.E. programs at school. And um, then one night, uh, Gil and I were at a fundraiser for David Hungerford's daughter, Shannon, who unfortunately she died of a drug overdose a year after Kevin. And that's where I met Margie, who is our director. And Margie said that she had a program which was uh, called Jade, Juvenile Alcohol Drug Education. Um, and she asked me if I would be interested in speaking. So then I started speaking, and then I told Gil about it, and then Gil started speaking. And then it's just taken off, and then Margie left where she was working, and we collaborated, and that's how California Youth Service started. Most of the parents, when they first come in, are, are it seemed to be uh, angry, um, almost like, hey, I'm not the one who got in trouble. Why do I have to be here? You know, my kid screwed up. <laughs> this isn't on me. 
but over the course of, of for instance, the Jade programs, I think they get an education and they seem to be a lot more um, flexible in taking a look at their, you know, what they may have may not have done that has contributed possibly to their kids making decisions that weren't in their best interest. I don't think that there's any judgment on them in any way, shape, or form in saying, hey, you are a bad parent, because I certainly don't believe that. I think that as parents, our job is to provide opportunities for our kids to succeed in some way. Um, but uh, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink. And so our job as a parent is to provide those opportunities. Uh, a lot of parents uh, are in denial, or like I was, and that uh, they need to be educated to look for signs, the proper signs uh, for, uh, of addiction. And so, I, and um, I could tell that there was a passion that, that Margie and her group had for wanting to help young children. And I thought the age bracket as well as, uh, was good as well. And the reason being, from age 12 to 17, that's when they can start down the path. And if you keep them on the right path during those years, they have a lot better chance, I think, in the future. The most important thing CYS does, I feel, is equipping parents for parenting and giving them tools and resources. Um, not, not just simple things like just say no or that's bad, but they actually give them resources on where to go from help. They hear from reality-based speakers of people who've actually been there, done that, and um, to give them the strength and encouragement. Uh, many of our speakers are involved because they personally have been touched by addiction or by depression or anxiety issues or bullying, and so many families uh, reach out to us for resources and help. It's a very broad mission, but it, it, it focuses on uh, teens, young adults, individuals, families to work with issues related to substance abuse, decision making, uh, mental health, and the challenges that people face in their lives. So when you focus on it, there's a heavy emphasis on prevention education on substance abuse, and then working with families and parents to balance that issue of how do you parent in a positive way your kids to be successful and healthy. A lot of the times, um, some some people think that um, Gil and I just speak at high schools and we just have our Jade program and they don't realize that we have the counseling service and t to keep something like this going you need the funds and the fundraiser also shows the people that are attending the fundraiser what we do and see that it's just not one portion. It, we help parents with resources. We help teens with resources. What's more important than your kids? As I say to, to some of the kids sitting in our classes, you don't think about it, but in our lives, everyone that lives with kids, that is the most important part of, of, of their life is helping their kids to grow up and be healthy. I think that it's investing back into, the, into their own community in particular. Uh, the youth of uh, today is going to be our leaders for tomorrow, and uh, so we really need their help. One of the friend of mine said, you know, Flo, I think it's great what you and Gil do, but do you really think you're making a difference? And I was telling somebody that story, and they had sent me a, a story, of, and I use this every time I speak to the young teens, and I give them um, a starfish at the end and these are little real starfishes that I had ordered and what it is about a man who walks along a beach and as he's walking along a beach he sees this young man bending down picking something up and he says I've been watching you for 20 minutes can I ask what you're doing and he says yeah it was a big storm last night washed up the starfish it's low tide the sun's out they're gonna die he goes man goes, do you know how many miles and miles of beach and thousands and thousands of starfish? You can't possibly make a difference. And with that, the young man threw his starfish in the ocean and he goes, but I made a difference for that one. So if I make a difference for one of you kids today, then you're my starfish. And that's my mission.